Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of The Hot Seat, a wireless design and development interview series where we talk about the latest wireless technology components and design issues for the wireless design engineering community. Today we are speaking with Dr. Roger Hajar. Since 2005, Roger has pioneered laser phosphor display technology, working with multidisciplinary technologists and business people in the U.S. and around the globe. Dr. Hajar has filed more than 75 U.S. and worldwide patents and has a proven record of success in taking optical-based technologies from inception to high-volume manufacturing. Prior to PRISM, Roger served as Vice President and General Manager of Transmission Subsystems with Avenex Corporation and Vice President of Technology with VIT Semiconductor. Roger was Chief Technology Officer and founder of Versatile Optical Networks prior to its acquisition by VITES and later Avenex. Roger held management positions with TerraStore Corporation and the Eastman Kodak Company. He also held research positions at the Optical Sciences Center at the University of Arizona and IBM's TJ Watson Research Center. Today, Roger will be discussing laser phosphor to space. Welcome, Roger. So then for my first question, Roger, can you describe the technology behind laser phosphor displays and how they are unique from other displays technologies such as LED, LCDs, and plasmas? Laser phosphor display, the way it works is, uh, as the name suggests, we use a laser to excite phosphor on a screen. Um, and uh, the phosphors usually are deposited in a red, green, blue stripes. So we, we form the primary colors and we mix them to make an image. Uh, the lasers are raster scanned, and by raster scanning, I mean they, they form lines on the display from left to right, top down, to make an image. Um, it's very similar in a way to the old uh, CRT, uh, you, you didn't mention uh, cathode ray tubes because now they're kind of obsolete. But the way that technology works is uh, you have an electron beam that scans a phosphor screen and it makes an image. In the, in the case of a laser phosphor display, we replace the electron scanning beam with a laser scanning optical beam. It's a photon beam versus an electron beam. Um, by doing that, we have simplified the display technology quite a bit from bulky glass to vacuum uh, to very large scale uh, video wall systems that we'll talk about. Uh, one thing to note though is uh, we're different in a little bit uh, as well from an IP point of view. Uh, PRISM has invented, developed, designed, manufactured the entire technology from the ground up. So we own the exclusively the intellectual property of the technology as well. Um, in the case of LCD, plasma or others, many people own that some parts of the technology and can manufacture it. We on the other hand own exclusively the technology. Um, one more point to add, uh, and this is to simplify the understanding of how the technology works. I, I mentioned CRT in one example, but the technology is based on a, uh, several uh, well-established uh, products in terms of uh, understanding how, how it works. Uh, we, we took the CRT as an example, but we also use a laser, uh, semiconductor laser beam that is normally used in a Blu-ray player. Uh, Blu-ray is another technology where it, it's using a laser beam to read and write information on a disc. We use a similar laser in our LPD technology to excite the phosphors on the screen. Uh, the, uh, the blue logic between the laser and the phosphor plate is a scanning system. Here again, we leveraged a well-established technology in the laser printer market where you have a laser that is scanned on a piece of paper and that uses a scanner. We use a similar type of technology there. So from a very high level, LPD, e even though it's unique in terms of its design and technology, it actually leverages a lot of the pre-established technologies and products out there. And it's sort of an integration of many technologies that have come together recently, and we put it together to form a new display uh, platform. What trends were occurring in the industry that created a need for LPD technology? And how does it set the bar for the future developments of displays? First, uh, when we started the technology, we were at the time in 2005, we were thinking, well, we want to go into some uh, small TV screen uh, into the home. But uh, talking to customers, there was a need for very large, actually, displays. Uh, by large, I mean several feet in, in size, not, you know, 50 inch or 60 inch. And uh, we found that our technology is actually very well suited for large, immersive, uh, life-size, we call them, uh, displays. And it actually found a very nice uh, market for it because no one, no one else can go there if you know LCD or 
plasma, they have a limited size. Uh, projectors can project a large image like you would see in a movie theater, but they're not as bright, brightly lit, so you need to dim down the light. So we've offered a best of all, a, a self-emissive screen, like an LCD screen or a plasma, but much larger. And that's where LPD found its, its home. Additionally, we found that LPD is very power efficient. So when you want to have a large display, the number one of the key requirements is how much power you need to draw from, from the AC, you, the HVAC you need to cool the display. We found that LPD is very efficient and that helped us also scale the technology to very large sizes. So we fill that gap today with our video walls which are installed around the world, uh, principally because of the LPD technology. And can you discuss the events that led to PRISM's collaboration with Cisco and what does the relationship mean for PRISM as a company with the display market? Basically, we started the company in 2005. In the 2010-2011 era, we started selling our video wall products to many commercial applications, uh, be it uh, lobbies or uh, broadcast market or uh, simply digital signage and retail, the command and control is another market. Uh, in the last, uh, I would say, year or so, we started seeing the channel, and by channel I mean the system integrators, taking our video walls and using them in actually the conference room. Uh, and in the conference room, they found a very good use for our technology because we can do video conferencing, uh, like we're doing now, but on a larger scale, on a life-size scale, uh, including many people, and uh, doing a notation on the board, on the, the display itself, because we are touch-enabled. Uh, and doing presentation at the same time. So uh, when we started seeing the application of our technology in, this, in that solution space, which is more on the conferencing, conference rooms, uh, this is where the Cisco name came up, which is uh, a leader there in the telepresence world. Uh, Cisco has uh, been there for a while in, in terms of either a one-on-one -on -one personalized uh, teleconferencing or larger systems, we actually uh, go a little bit bigger in size than the normal uh, systems they use today. It's a little bit more seamless, it's, uh, it's big, and it offers a little bit more collaboration. So we are, in the case of our product, it's a complementary to the host of uh, solutions they, they serve. Uh, our relationship there is, again, complementing the product suite, but also working together because Cisco has a very nice uh, camera and codec that transmits video images seamlessly and without breakup and all of these nice things. So we are using that uh, technology with our display technology to form that completed product. Um, where it's different, and again, in terms of the display space is today the displays are normally limited in size. So today you have an LCD they would use uh, or uh, they, they don't really typically use projectors, they're too dim uh, for their video conferencing. Um, so we, we actually, again, set the bar higher in terms of size, life size. Um, and it's like literally being there, you don't have to travel, you just turn the, the thing on and you conference with your colleagues across the world and you can sit there all day long leaving the device on. Back to energy efficiency is important. Um, and it, it, it's really a phosphor type self-emissive display, it doesn't strain the eye. Uh, it's very comfortable. Um, so we're finding very good success with that market, which is the notoriously known as the telepresence market. Can you provide us some insight on what consumers can expect from PRISM in the near future? So again, we start in the commercial world. Uh, I'll take you back to the installations around the world that we're going into the conference rooms with this uh, life-size display. The next uh, immediate step is when people start seeing these displays on this large size, life-size, their, their first reaction is, when can I have this in my home? Uh, so, it, it, yeah, it's, it's really a video wall, now it's setting, it's not really a, a small display. So you could imagine a wall in any, anyone's home turning into a display. Uh, the, the, we call it, the, it becomes the whole wall, becomes a display space. There you can have many applications uh, from uh, collaboration again to watching a movie or it's not going to be uh, strictly a watching movie uh, video wall in the home. It will have many more applications uh, that we could uh, uh, embed into it, uh, including camera and touch and, and so on. Uh, but the number one I would say is the life-size display in the home without having to have a dedicated theater room uh, where you could see large movies or do whatever. 
Um, so that's definitely the next progression for us um, in terms of uh, life-size displays into the home. What about any educational um, industries? Do you guys think that maybe this is something that the educational system would want to incorporate in their classrooms, especially among universities or maybe um, on an advertising industry perspective? Is this something that could be used for billboards or Times Square maybe? <laughs> Great, great question. So two different markets, one on the, the just on the education uh, side, uh, no question, back to this uh, life-size uh, conference room device we're selling, and they come in two big sizes, uh, you know, as big as uh, 200 inch or uh, in size or 150 inch and so on. It's actually modular, any size that fits the room. But having a life-size display, and especially in the height space, because most displays today have a certain height that's limiting so we're only seeing half the person or we don't see all the information we need. Uh, having a large display allows the digital classroom to become uh, reality, including, by the way, whiteboarding. Uh, our, our display is enabled with the touch and also a notation. So you could actually write on the display and that information is uh, directly seen on the other person's display without having to have a board per se. So we are combining the experience of presentation video conferencing and whiteboarding all in one surface. So definitely the digital classroom, in fact, back to the home question, my, my, my thinking is that for people to adopt the technology, it's going to be more than watching movies. It's going to be, can I have my son or daughter do the classroom without having to leave the home uh, and have that re experience really be a li a real reality and instead of a small screen and you cannot see the detail. Uh, we believe we can get there with this type of technology, for sure. Uh, your second question is more on the billboard applications. We are higher resolution displays for the indoors, um, uh, but from a, a out, uh, you know, a outdoor type displays, we could go there. We have a good value proposition, uh, but it requires a, a different type of, um, let's say, product suite to go in the outdoor. It's a different requirement from an environment point of view and uh, and so on, and brightness point of view. Uh, but clearly the outdoor is much high, less resolution uh, in terms of pixel spacing. It's more than the 10 to 20 millimeter. Here we're talking a millimeter type resolution. Uh, and that's why we decided to go indoor because the uh, market is actually larger uh, uh, than the outdoor one. And from a state of the industry perspective, can you um, inform us like some of the things that keep you up at night? So, uh, just to put things in perspective, uh, we, uh, uh, any other display technology takes uh, years in R&D. Uh, we're talking tens of years. And then after you're done with the R&D, it takes billions of dollars to, to make it into a reality because you need a wafer fab. The technologies you, you uh, mentioned earlier, especially LCD, OLED, plasma require a wafer fab. And that requires billions and billions of dollars. Uh, I'm, I'm putting things in perspective because we started in 2005, 2010, five years later we were able to put this technology together as a display technology. We clearly did not use those amount of massive amounts of money from an R&D point of view, nor capital point of view. So what keeps me up at night is this uh, rush of, wow, you've done this, can you do that mm -hmm. and that? So there's a lot of requirements or requests, I would say, from uh, whether customers or uh, people saying again, you know, can, why can I have this in my home? So we have to be focused here. We have to support our existing customers uh, with the existing product, migrate to the solution space in the conferencing and support our partnerships uh, that we have worldwide and then migrate to the home. We have to take it in stepped approach and do it right. Uh, just because we could be too successful and you know not not getting it right the first time so we have to make sure we we go at it step by step uh, given that it, we got here so fast uh, we want to make sure we build on it the right way well those are all the questions i had for you today raja is there anything else that you could think of that would be important for our viewers to know um, about prism or the phosphor displays they are creating I would recommend to visit our website. We've launched an ad uh, about our product, uh, specifically about the conference rooms. Uh, I would love it if they go and see the ad. It, it illustrates the usefulness of the technology in a life size. 
I truly believe this is the next big thing in terms of conference room, uh, improving collaboration and productivity in the workplace. Uh, I would invite them to go see the ad uh, and uh, you know keep track of our progress. Thank you, Roger, for joining us today talking about laser phosphor displays. And thank you guys for joining us on today's WDD's Hot Seat.